Hello YouTubers, it's Arya here. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about five things I wish I would have known before undergoing anesthesia and conscious sedation. I've had to undergo uh, nerve block procedures um, about roughly five or six of nerve block procedures and for each one I've either been sedated or have been uh, put under where I've had to receive anesthesia uh, mixed with other medications. So what I wish I would have known about, you know, these procedures and having anesthesia and sedation is number one, um, to make sure you drink plenty of fluids and a variety of fluids the day before or even a couple of days before having your procedure and the reason why is because you do get really dehydrated um by you know going the night before not being able to eat or drink anything and if your procedure is in the afternoon the next day or midday then you're also going like that morning um not being able to drink any liquids or eat anything so your body does get dehydrated and um what i've done to help with this is uh buy coconut water last time i bought two coconut waters and i started drinking it two days before my procedure and i literally um started drinking so much water the day before my procedure i was drinking and i know it's not good to drink you know a lot of water because you could get like a rare thing that happens water intoxication when you just drink so much water in a short amount of time but like for me I personally took it upon myself to make sure I was really well hydrated because I feel like the recovery is easier if I'm hydrated versus dehydrated and I've also had where I've been a hard stick because you know dehydration and not being with the nurses not being able to find a vein to to poke me to start the IV in so uh, that's one of the tips that a nurse gave me is to make sure that you hydrate the day before um, so yeah so usually I either buy um, electrolyte water I buy like the liters of electrolyte water or I'll just drink uh, bottled water um, and then the coconut water also and then I make sure that I have like I guess energizing food to eat afterwards even though I don't really get hungry um, but I try to stay away from you know it's just so easy to stop for fast food on the way after the procedure um, so it, it's definitely important to have healthy food available uh, so that is number one to make sure you are well hydrated uh, number two really inquire what they will be using uh, for the procedure or for the anesthesia because it's a procedure can be done in many different ways and different anesthesia drugs sedative drugs can be used um, I've just had like a whopping amount of different kinds of medications you know I've had a mixture of Versed I've had ketamine propofol I've had um, well I guess those have been like the top really the top ones that I've had do your research because some of them like Versed can cause memory loss um, you know, and like ketamine, that's like a disassociative drug. So, you know, you might have some of those symptoms. It depends. Propofol. Um, so it's definitely important to look up side effects from these medications or ask your doctor what side effects you can expect from these medications. I know for, for me, Versed, uh, usually it doesn't cause memory loss for me. Uh, propofol I have a really big problem with nausea and vomiting with propofol and then ketamine I had a problem with disassociation and vomiting and nausea so it's definitely important to you know make note of if you've had you know those drugs before and you've had like nausea vomiting to let your care team know 
before going into your procedure, how you've re reacted in the past, um, and to be well informed about what they will be using. There may be leeway on when you get scheduled for your procedure, like super early in the morning, midday, or at the end of the day. And personally, I feel like it's better to be scheduled either very, very early in the morning or the, be the latest appointment or be scheduled in the afternoon. Um, and the reason why is because my experience, I've had, I think, three nerve blocks that have been scheduled right in the morning. Like, you know, where check-in was at 8 a.m. and my appointment is at 9 a.m. So with with having a morning time, you spend less time um, being dehydrated. I'm in the morning, everything is on time, no one is running late, um, and, and you don't have to wait for, well, I mean, you might have to wait a little bit for other patients to go before you, um, you know, depending on how many patients are scheduled in that time slot. Um, but I just find that everything is more timely, like no doctors aren't running late yet. Um, it's a little bit more calm and um, like slower paced in the morning, not as busy as in the afternoons. Um, so morning mornings, I think, are a really, really good time to, you know, have the procedure. Um, and then by the time you get out of there, it'll be... Well, it depends on what you're having, I guess, right? Um, but yeah, so uh, the appointments, the latest time of the day that you can get in scheduled, I think also has its benefits. Number one, because you might be one of the last few patients of the day. Um, therefore, your doctor might not feel so rush to get you out of there um and and um you know there could also be less patients scheduled during that time because it is at the end of the day and not a lot of people really want to go the whole day without having uh a or a drink 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 any drinking any liquid not everyone can even go the whole day, you know, um, fasting for that long. So that also has its benefits. Um, you know, possibly fewer patients are going to be scheduled at like 4 p.m. I've had one appointment that was at 4 p.m. Um, and the downsides of this is that the doctor can be running late. When I had my appointment, the doctor was running about 40 minutes late. Um, but at the same time, the doctor took his time. He wasn't rushing to go home or anything like that. And, um, there were less patients and, um, you know, I didn't have a job to go back to. Um, I mean, I didn't have, you know, like anything really preventing me from scheduling uh, an appointment really late in the day the only thing is it is really hard to go that long without uh, drinking or eating anything uh, so be prepared I think the worst appointment in my experience has been scheduling a midday appointment and the reason why is because um, the last nerve block I had was at the check-in was at 12 30 and it starts at 1.30, but like everything was just so fast paced and so many more patients yeah. and and um, the patients from the morning, that's when like the doctor starts getting like behind. Tip number four is to not worry and not overthink about the procedure. So the most important that day is that you show up on time. That's what everyone cares about, that you show up on time, um, that you have 
all of your paperwork, you know, your ID, your insurance card, everything. So definitely spend more time thinking about preparing for your day, like accounting for, you know, any accidents along the way or traffic. Um, because it's most important to be there on time. <laughs> okay, and the last, um, the last thing I would, you think a little bit about questions that you may have, um, before your procedure. I always think it's good to ask questions, um, and to prepare my questions before I go into the procedure. Because it's easy to forget, you know, so many things are going to be happening. Well, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please, please subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me if you did. And see you next time. Bye, guys.